Welcome to the Medical Ancillary Sales Podcast, your number one source for making money in the medical ancillary sector. Mike and Viv bring you the latest information from lab services, pharmacy, diagnostic testing, and so much more. The latest in ancillary services will be right around the corner. Welcoming the hosts of the Medical Ancillary Sales Podcast, here's Mike and Viv. Welcome to the Medical Ancillary Sales Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Berg, and joined as always by Viv Hudson. Viv, guess guess what today is? Guess what this episode is? I was going to say it's hump day, but... <laughs> no, this <laughs> is... Episode. Well, this is not when people are not listening to this on hump day, though. This is, oh, this uh, is a I milestone. Know, I know, I know, I know. It's our 50th episode. <laughs> It's it's fifty. The number fifty is going through my head, and I'm actually headed to the East Coast this weekend for my for my parents' fiftieth wedding anniversary. So I got the number wow. fifty is just all around me. And today we have on a repeat guest here, a special guest due to overwhelming demand. We have Arnie Benson on. Arnie, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, and hello, Vivian. Uh... Welcome to the 50 Club Plus, I guess. <laughs> well, she's not part of that 50 Club. Come on, bite your tongue. Okay. <laughs> I, I keep my Zimmer frame in the, in the back of the car where nobody can see it. <laughs> so, uh, Arnie, um, you have a very, very interesting program that you had brought to our sales reps where sales reps could, if they have hospital connections with any of the C-suite people in a hospital, you could hook them up with a tremendous, tremendous referral bonus for um, just for the introduction. And this has to do with with adding on a, a high complexity lab to the hospital's existing laboratory. Could first and foremost, I know there's been some some changes in the program, all changes for the better. I was when you brought it to me, I was really excited to see uh, the, the changes that came about. But before we go into the changes, can you just do a quick recap for us and let us know what is the program that we will be pitching to these these C-suite hospital people? Sure. Uh, in fact, we, we spoke about it at the last podcast, and we spoke about creating a strategic partnership with the healthcare facilities directly. And the sort of business model, if you will, is that's at a zero cost because based upon the laboratory group that's a, a very large public company, is going to be investing their dollars, which in a lot of instances is over a million and a quarter and sometimes even higher, to put into their facility a laboratory which uh, will deliver a state-of-the-art biomarker testing and health management services. The nice thing about where they're going directionally, and if you might recall from the previous podcast, it really focuses in on cardiology and diabetes as being the two biggest readmissions into the facility. And in this joint venture partner, the facility gets to white label the program and they deliver their services under their hospital brand and then continuing to offer a much larger community base of patients and providers. And we're finding out more and more that there's a lot of patients in the demographic in areas that hospitals, once they sign up, actually have a built-in caseload, which is another positive attribute to this thing and where it's, it's coming along. So we have state-of-the-art biomarker testing, the clinical health consultants, the support and the integration services on a 24-7 basis. And uh, they're CLIA-certified, CAP-accredited clinical laboratory. And the hospital donates a 1,200 square foot area on their property. Now, if it's four or five miles on the street, you know, there's a question as to the validity of that, but adjacent in the parking lot or any areas that, that could uh, could utilize that program. And when we previous spoke on this subject, we found that by getting an initial meeting, upon that initial meeting, 
you'd have a conversation, you pre-qualify for them, but then the outcome was saying, we're now going to show up to your facility and have a face-to-face meeting. That uh, actually paid $2,000. And then in the event that they actually sign a contract, which we're hearing again that based upon the pre-qualifications ones, they're at a very high 70, 78 percentile basis in moving this thing forward, that between 90 and 120 days after the inception of the program, and they're up and operational, there's another $50,000 bonus that would be uh, rewarded to the uh, to the salesperson that brought us that opportunity. So, Arnie, I know that some of the feedback we had gotten was... I mean, we're in the ancillary space here. Let, let's face it. One of the reasons that people get into this space is for the residual income. So I know there's been some changes to address that. Can you run through the changes? Yes, and that's the positive attribute. And I think one of the main reasons why we're having this additional podcast. The exciting news is that we now have an opportunity to enjoy a recurring revenue model directly with the facility once they're open and moving that forward. Those numbers are ranging, you know, with the, and again, use these as soft numbers in taking a look at what we might be looking at for uh, a size wise, but let's just say in a rural facility that may be generating somewhere in the neighborhood of an additional $4 million, which is not a small number in comparison, but it's a big number to them because some of these rural facilities only make $4 million a year, that by adding that additional $4 million on, we are looking at potentially getting about 2.5% residual override, which then will give 1.5% to the salesperson. What does that mean to them? That example I said previously, $4 million, we'll be looking at an additional $60,000 a year in recurring revenue. Another interesting sidebar is that we have a very substantial contract that we're working on that's uh, several facilities in in, uh, in the west coast and i think they're numbering in about seven in total ballpark figures they're looking at about 30 million in additional revenue and for that salesperson on on that uh, they're looking at probably about four hundred and fifty thousand dollars in additional revenue it may be lower than that because we might not be able to get the maximum benefit for our recurring. But the long and short of it is is that it's a huge uptake to where we were before, which I thought was an incredible opportunity in its own right. So does that uh, does that money, does that affect the initial bonuses at all? So the initial 2000 that they get for setting up the meeting and the 50000 when the um, hospital signs on? Great question, Phil. Uh, the answer is no. So it's $2,000 for the face-to-face meeting, $50,000 upon inception of the contract, and then the override comes specifically from the facility itself, the uh, hospital, and that contract uh, would be part and parcel to the whole solution. So it's just an added benefit on top of it, creating this additional recurring revenue model for us. Arnie, who are you looking for? I mean, you don't want people to sell this program. You're just looking for introductions. Who? What ex- exactly are you looking for? If a salesperson has an opportunity to get into a C-suite situation, and I look at it in a reverse order depending upon the size and magnitude, CFO, CEO, COO, director of business development, mix them up however you think is the, is the path of least resistance to tee that meeting up. All we want is a timeline. Myself and the expert from the company directly will be on pre-qualifying that individual. And honestly, from that point forward, the salesperson has little or nothing to do with the process because then it goes directly to the to the uh, laboratory, who then enter into a non-disclosure agreement and pick up the ball and run with it. Yeah, it's it, this is a tremendous uh, amount of money that you're talking. Boy, I mean, I'm thinking of anyone that I know <laughs> that works in the hospital realm. I mean, this is for the amount of money that you're getting with the minimal amount of effort that you have to do. You're really just piggybacking on, on their relationships. I mean, th- this just seems tremendous. It is. And in fact, you know, in our world, as in the ancillary medical solutions model, we call on cl- 
clinic base primarily. So we may not even have those uh, contacts, but we do know people who do. There's plenty of money to be able to go around to co-broker or resell the, that opportunity with them. We have individuals that we're speaking to in my local demographic right now that knows that he's got to share the pie, so to speak. And But there's plenty to go around. Right. So you, so as a sales rep, you have the ability to do that if you want. If you knew someone that maybe was in a something non-medical related, but they deal with hospital administrators, you could work out whatever kind of deal you want to work out with them. Right? Exactly. I mean, the, the company's open to that? Exactly. They are. So really, it's it's a matter of just getting out there and getting connected and, and really just talking about the solution because obviously it's a very good solution for everybody involved from patients to hospitals to sales reps and to the, the founding company. It's just a win-win all round. So uh, you just got to get out and talk about it and, and see what you can attract. Exactly. In fact, we have a couple of documents that support the methodology of approach, once they, they tee up the first meeting, the company themselves and their their um, executive team pick up the ball and run with it through inception and into the implementation and, and the construction phase and opening up the doors. And that joint venture partnership for the facility has a lot more depth than just what currently is available. And the other caveat to it is if they already have laboratory services in some manner, shape, or form, none of that gets touched. This is in addition to anything and everything they already have in existence. Well, Arnie, I, I think people should do what I would do in this situation. If you have one of these contacts, if you've made contact, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, mess with it too much because I would just be worried about screwing it up. And so I don't think it's good to arm people with too much knowledge. I would say the first step, if you have one of these contacts that you feel strong about, contact Arnie directly because that's exactly what I would do if I have one of these contacts. I say, Arnie, I, th help me strategize here. Help me bring this one in. So what do people do if they have somebody on the hook or if they have a, a good potential lead? How do they reach you? How do they get everything moving? Pretty easy. And I'm going to give you my personal email. It's my first initial and my last name and the number 54. A Benson, B as in boy, E N S O N 54 at msn.com. And my direct line is area code 480 399 2877. And this is a national footprint. There is not a state currently that they're uh, unable to do business in. Perfect. Arnie, well, I want to thank you for joining us. Thanks, Arnie. My pleasure. A wealth of, a wealth of information and money, Thanks. hopefully. Thank you. You guys <laughs> be well. 